Hey guys, how's it going? Tifty here, and today we've got 10 tips for the Battle NG, or the Gunslinger NG, whatever you want to call him. It's nice to be able to revive this series, it's been a long time. These were really well received back in the day when I made these. I kind of ran out of classes I was half decent at, and then I realised Battle NG, of course. Gotta make one for him. So I've already done one for the regular engineer. I'll try my best to avoid too much crossover there and you know, I'll avoid some of the more basic engineer tips and try and focus specifically on Battle NG. Anyway, I hope you enjoy. Let's jump in and take a look at what we've got. Number one, the telly is the number one priority. A bit of a boring one to start us off, I'm sorry about that. But it has to be said, and it has to be the first one because of how important it really is. There are very few situations where the telly is not the number one priority, such as at the very beginning of a payload match when, you know, there's nowhere to telly to. But in all other cases, this should be the top of your list of things to do. Uncle Dane has said it before, tellies win games. It's as simple as that. You know, sometimes it can be like, you know, I'm investing a lot of time into this building and you do have to rely on your team following up. but. Some maps in particular are just nearly impossible to win with balanced teams without a telly. The best example is Dust Bowl. All three Dust Bowl maps, the second point, if you want to win, you really need a telly. So yeah, obviously try and keep up with the front lines of the battle, moving your telly forward and backwards as the front line moves. In this example, we're on Dust Bowl and I had a telly set up to get us up the stairs at the beginning, which is quite important. I figured we'd push around this corner, so I'm going to move the telly forward. Then I realised maybe we haven't pushed quite so far up. I'm going to bring it back a bit and I whack it around this corner here. You know, just having a telly just to this point here is still a huge help to your team. So here we're having a bit of a battle on the front. I spot an Uber and I'm like, okay, my number one priority is to protect my telly. And when it feels right again, move that telly back up to roughly where the front lines are. But obviously be careful not to be moving it every, you know, 10 seconds because it takes a while to rebuild. Only move it when you're confident you can get it back down in a nice safe place. One last thing I'll say about tellies is it doesn't really matter what kind of map you're playing. If you're playing Koth, a telly is important. If you're playing Payload and you feel like you've just captured a point and you don't really need one yet, a telly is important. It's 50 metal. If it gets destroyed, it's no big deal. If it brings in a heavy at a medic, it's a huge deal, you know? Number two, build, fight, build. So this is a bit of a personal playstyle I have I wanted to chat to you guys about. Before I've built my base, this is kind of the mindset I have. So first of all, I want to get all my buildings down as soon as possible, one of each. Again, here we're on upward, we're pushing on to the last point. The order will vary, but in this case, the first thing I want to do is quickly whack a sentry down to kind of cover my back, then a telly, and then a dispenser, and now I've got all those down, I'm just going to take a second to kind of help hold the front line, and that's what I mean by build and then fight and then build. So I'm just turning my attention to the front lines, making sure that I'm basically not going to be overwhelmed very quickly. Having a presence on the front line I think can be really useful. When you feel like you have that comfortable front line set up, you have teammates around you, turning your attention back onto the buildings and upgrading them. Obviously this doesn't go for every single situation ever. Sometimes, you know, you might be super safe, you can upgrade your telly to level 3 straight away. Koth is a really good example of this. There's a crazy fight at the beginning of the game that's super important. As soon as you get to mid, throw your buildings down quickly. Either have a build order in mind or, you know, some locations in mind, you know, to stop you kind of going, oh, should I put it here or here? You want to be putting it down super quick. And then you can help put some damage out, have a presence on the front line, and then as the fight's starting to stabilise, you can start to work on upgrading those buildings. I find you can bring way more value to the fight by being there at the front lines, dealing damage with your shotgun, as well as having those buildings. One thing I find really difficult is the decision as to when you should go for the objective as an engineer. On the one hand, you need to look after your buildings, but on the other hand, if there's a big push going on, and maybe just having you on the front line of that push as well may just turn the tide of battle, then you kind of want to be in that push to win the game. Deciding when that's the right thing to do is very difficult, and it, it's just basically game sense. Here's an example where it was, it was pretty lucky to be fair. We're on Dust Bowl, all my buildings are in place, I'm going to go for the final charge into the point. As I come in, I'm dealing huge amount of damage and I'm really contributing to this push. And in the background I notice all my buildings going down, so it really is just do or die at this point. Luckily our team pulls together for this push and we just about managed to cap the point. So yeah, what I wanted to demonstrate there was, you know, this kind of order of doing things. So, you know, get your buildings up quickly, have a presence on the front line, upgrade your buildings, and when it feels right, it's very difficult to judge, but sometimes by being involved in that push, you may just turn the tide off the fight. Number three, disposable sentry guns. This is a pretty obvious one, but again, it's really important, so I wanted to make sure it's an item on the list. 
basically don't worry about your sentry guns. Don't run miles out of position to try and save them. But at the same time, make sure you always have one down. This is great for having a presence when you're dead as well, I find. So what I love about the engineer is if you've got all your buildings up, when you're dead, you're still contributing a huge amount of value to the game. And you're the only class who can do that. But yeah, don't worry about your sentry guns too much. Obviously, like I said before, move them backwards and forwards with the front line. That can be okay. Occasionally they're worth fixing. You know, if you're nearby, sure, take off a sapper, but try not to be too precious with them, basically. They're not like a level three sentry gun, which you have to kind of babysit to some degree. And don't be too neat with their positioning. You wanna throw them down quickly and you wanna move on. As soon as one goes down, throw another one up immediately. And then you'll always have that second source of damage on the map at all times. Number four, crossfire. So this tip could have also been called don't stay near your sentry gun or give them two targets. I like the idea of crossfire, it sounded cool, so we'll go with that, but there's, there's a multiple things in this tip I wanted to talk about. So number one, you wanna be scattering your buildings out even more so than a regular engineer I find. And more specifically, wherever your sentry gun happens to be thrown down, the key is to stay away from it. So you give the enemy two targets to focus on. You wanna be attacking from another angle, creating kind of a crossfire in some situations. So basically the enemy can't take you both out at once. I would argue that half the value of a mini SG is the fact that it's a great distraction. So here's another great little example on Dust Bowl. We're on the final map. And as you can see, I've got my sentry gun kind of to the right hand side there up on that ledge. By having myself positioned on the other side of this choke, it immediately makes the blue team's job a lot more difficult because basically they've got two things to focus on and two sources of damage coming at them. It might not sound like much, but that actually, it really does slow them down. Like cognitively, it's a lot more to kind of think about. Obviously you've got your teammates as well coming at different angles. If I was up there with my sentry gun, they'd be like, right, I'm getting loads of shots from this angle. They'd, they'd look up, they'd see a bunch of red and they'd just demolish the both of us. But by spreading out, we're doing way more damage and they're taking ages to actually take this sentry gun out. But it's not just you and your mini sentry gun that can kind of create this crossfire. I find it's also great to do this with other sentry guns. Say you've got a level three sentry gun, obviously don't build your sentry next to it. Make sure you're using a different angle so that when the enemy comes through, they've got far too many targets to be able to focus on at once. Number five, be half the damage. Now this kind of fits in quite nicely with the previous tip we just talked about. But basically your sentry gun does not put out enough damage to make a huge impact. And yourself, you don't put out enough damage to make a huge impact. But together, your combined damage can do a lot of work. You need to get really familiar with your shotgun and don't neglect your secondary as well if it's a pistol. I need to get better at this myself, but switching over to pistol can be great just to finish off an enemy. But yeah, what you wanna be doing is constantly chipping away at the enemies using your shotgun or whatever weapon you're using to help contribute to the damage output that you're doing. The way I think of it is other classes do all the damage they need to do, but you, you probably do about 50% and your sentry gun does about 50%. So you need to make sure they're both working at the same time, often on the same target to be getting the most value that you can get. Number six, use dynamic sentry gun positions. All I mean here is basically just keep them moving around. Try not to use the same place over and over again because people will very quickly learn, okay, there's gonna be a mini sentry in that corner. One rocket, it's down, it becomes absolutely worthless. So what you wanna do is, like we said before, as soon as one goes down, you wanna throw another one up. But when you throw another one up, consider another location. And I find it really useful to have two or three in your mind at all times, which you can rotate around. And therefore you don't have to think too much about where the next one's gonna go. And making sure that the gun is kind of in a position to support your team. The mini sentry really does work best when it's supporting another team member or yourself to deal that damage like we talked about before. So yeah, make sure you're keeping up with the team, moving it forward, moving it backwards with the flow of the game and mixing up the position whenever it goes down. Number seven, use sneaky sentry gun positions. Again, a fairly obvious one, but basically the longer it takes to spot your sentry gun, the more damage you'll put out before it gets taken down. That's a very simple bit of logic there. If it's right in the open, they'll get damaged, they'll spin around, they'll see it, and then they'll take it down very easily. If you can sneak it behind a rock, in a corner, in a bush, it might take them a few seconds to figure out exactly what's going on, especially if they have other distractions, by which time they've taken a bunch of damage. So in the background here, there's a bunch of uh, little spots I like to use, just a few examples. Here's an example of a lovely little bush on upwards you can use. You know, it might seem silly, but in reality, it will take a couple more seconds to spot this. And there are loads of little bushes dotted around different maps. 
And actually, I thought this was a really good example on Gold Rush Map 2. We're in a bit of trouble here, but I basically just popped my little mini sentry gun down in the little gap. It's not ridiculously well hidden, but it's a little bit kind of out of sight, out of mind. As these guys come through, you know, we've got an Ubered soldier here, and it takes them a yonk to spot where this is coming from. This combines quite nicely with the idea of cross-firing and having multiple angles of attack. These guys, you know, they're kind of focused on spawn, but behind them, there's just a little sentry gun chipping away at them, you know, and it doesn't seem like a lot of damage, but it really does add up. That being said, occasionally, if you have the control of an area, sometimes having a sentry gun smack bang in the middle of that area, which has a really great line of sight, can be useful too. And getting a really good line of sight is difficult if you're sneaking it in a corner. So yeah, again, it does depend on the scenario, and different positions obviously work better, depending on what you're doing. Number eight, be aware of your value. So this is another kind of high level tip. I thought it was important to mention because as a gunslinger engineer, there are gonna be times when you're not gonna be able to get the most out of your class. You know, a soldier, he's a generalist. He's always valuable, whatever the situation. But occasionally, if there's a situation where you can't get your buildings down, you know, I'm thinking the beginning of a payload map, it's a lot more difficult to get that value out of him. I'm not saying you can't. Absolutely, a battle NG at the beginning of a payload map can be really useful. If you can get a mini sentry down quickly and if you're confident with your shotgun, he can do a really good job. But just be aware that, you know, you're obviously not gonna have a telly down at this point. Already you're kind of cutting, you know, say, let's say 20% of the NG's value. Is there another class that you could be using that's doing the same thing as you? You know, for example, a scout. If you're just running around with a shotgun, would you be better off as a scout? I personally will often, you know, start a payload map as a gunslinger NG, see how it goes, you know, but if if they're absolutely demolishing us and we're really just being spawn camped, then I'll consider, okay, maybe it's time to switch off. Number nine, the Frontier Justice Farm. So yeah, I wanted to add some more specific tips. And what I mean by that is actual things you can try out. Obviously, some people don't really like this weapon and you know, that's fine, so you can ignore this tip. But personally speaking, I love the Frontier Justice. I just find it so much fun and that burst damage you can get by just farming a couple of kills with your sentry gun is awesome. So yeah, what I mean by this tip is, obviously in most situations, you occasionally get your sentry gun down, you get a couple of crit hits, it's lovely. But if you notice that, okay, my sentry gun's got three kills, it's not doing any work at the moment. Sometimes you can actually just destroy it yourself. You know, you may as well grab those crit kills. If you can build it back up very quickly, it's no loss at all. So in some games, I find myself destroying my building, throwing another one up and farming those revenge shots. Try to resist going too crazy as an engineer with your revenge shots. You know, you wanna conserve your life. But if you spot a straight enemy overextending, having a couple of critical hits goes a very long way. It means you can absolutely one-on-one -on -one duel them without a problem, especially if it's someone like a demo man who's quite vulnerable at close quarter combat anyway. Finally, number 10. Remember you're a support. Now that sounds like a really boring final tip, but there's a few things I wanted to chat about here. Like I just mentioned, try not to get too carried away as a battle NG. It doesn't mean you're like the spearhead of the charge by any means. You're still a support character. Sure, you can get a bit more involved, deal out a bit of damage, but still, your buildings are still gonna be your most valuable contribution to the game. I have to admit, I often get carried away, especially when I have my revenge shots. I can't resist it. You know, I'm only playing in pubs, so it doesn't really matter too much. But yeah, try not to overextend, get too crazy aggressive on the enemy, keep yourself alive, keep your buildings alive. That's the most important thing. And as I said before, if everything's running smoothly, put out that chip damage, get a little bit more aggressive whilst remaining in range of your own buildings. One thing you can do more specifically to kind of help you survive a bit of a dire situation, and I'm sure you've seen this before, but throwing down a sentry gun as a distraction as you're running away can be really useful. So a couple of examples in the background here, Especially great for scouts who have a low HP, but most classes it works for. You throw one down, they'll almost always turn their attention to that building. On this example here, I'm coming out of this gate. I feel like we're pushing quite nicely up, but little did I know there's a freaking, there's a huge heavy round this corner with a pocket. So I throw my sentry gun down and immediately get the hell out of here. That building distracted him enough for me to be able to get out basically. And to be honest, in the past, even slightly more panicky situations, I've been known to throw other buildings down to try and save my life as well. One final thing I wanted to end on, and it kind of relates, try not to get too deterred. So you're gonna find that there's gonna be situations where your buildings will go down immediately over and over again. That doesn't mean, okay, we'll just give up. We're not gonna win this. That means we're in the middle of a fight. We're on the front line. Maybe move things slightly back a bit, but don't give up. The footage in the background here was just a nice piece of awesome, fun gameplay I had as a gunslinger. 
we were getting pressured so hard, but I just, you know, kept on whacking those buildings up. For me, that's definitely the most enjoyable way to play Gunslinger NG. When you really are on the edge of control, you know, and desperately trying to support your team, desperately holding that front line and having a huge contribution to the fight. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It went on a little bit longer than I planned, but you know, let me know if there are any tips I missed. There's so much you can chat about when it comes to just talking about a class in its entirety. So yeah, I'm sure there's some things I missed. Love to hear from you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys in the next video.